welcome back. I don't even know what all I'm going to be doing in this episode, but it's going to be getting this uh, 2000 ZR600 working again. It does work, but basically it's just not optimized. I want to get this thing dialed in, and if I don't love it anymore, it's for sale and I'm getting something else. So, let's get into this thing. So the history of this sled is, when I totaled my first snowmobile, this was the replacement. I bought this thing for really cheap. It was uh, 750 bucks. It was driven hard, put away wet. It was pretty beat. It was just real ragged. The running boards were curved from hitting jumps so hard. I mean, this thing was, was definitely an abused sled. Since I've owned it, I have pulled the carbs off of it. I've stripped those things, put new jets in them, polished all the parts, put those back together. I've put new exhaust gaskets on it. The compression was good. I ran some trick spark plug wires that are supposed to help with starting, and I think they do. I've taken apart the whole front suspension. Everything silver you see there has been poor 15 I have new rebuilt Fox shocks there, a sway bar because the sled didn't have a sway bar when I bought it. I put a mountain seat on it because the original seat was trash. That actually was a terrible idea. As you can see, the seat was taller than the handlebars. Really, the, the seat that should be on here is a lot lower, which allows you to hang off the side and really use your body weight to help this thing corner. I, I wound up getting a, a stock seat for it earlier this summer. Uh, my advice is whenever you need snowmobile parts, buy them in the summer. They're about half the price they are in the winter. One thing worth noting is this is a fuel tank for an EFI, and as you can see, this is a carb model. So the carb model tank just has... Uh, a fuel gauge. The EFI tank has room for a fuel pump and then here's where you put your fuel and then it's got a gauge on the side. I cut out a piece of plastic on my bandsaw that was about the diameter that would fit in here. The plastic was polyethylene which is the same material that the gas tank itself is made out of. What I am going to need to do is put a pickup tube uh, from here down into the tank. So I'm going to take it out of that tank, put it in this tank. We're going to put this seat and tank on this sled. The other issue I'm having is this thing is chewing through oil. In about one tank of gas, this oil reservoir will be almost completely dry. So the oil pump is down underneath the carbs. I'm going to check that. This sled just never seemed real snappy. Check this out. I, I think I've just figured out why. So if I throw the throttle down all the way, I don't know if you can see this, but the the throttle arm is not going to wide open throttle. There's still another quarter inch or something. So I'm gonna to need to try to figure out why this thing is not going to wide. Another reason I think I'm getting oil consumption is you can see the line coming from this tank is moist. It just has a zip tie on here, not an actual hose clamp. I, I think I'm gonna put a hose clamp on there instead so I can be sure that that thing is tight. And hopefully this doesn't make a big mess. New hose clamp on the bottom of that oil reservoir. The next thing I'm going to be checking here is the oil injection system. So the oil injection system on these old Articats uh, is kind of in a really weird place. So there's the oil reservoir. The injection pump is down below the carbs. You can kind of see it back there. So in order to access the oil injection pump, I'm going to try to remove the carbs and get them out of the way because it's just really hard to get to it. go. Alright, so here's the oil injection pump. Um, when I pull the throttle, this is where it should be at wide open throttle, but here's where it actually is. So that's my problem. I'm getting way too much oil. So this arm right here, this gray cable, is also connected to the throttle cable. So that it does the throttle for the carbs and it does the oil injection when you flip the happy paddle. But what you want to do is it might be hard to see here, but there's a little line right about here. I don't know if you can see it. It's it's not the edge of this, but it's it's close to it. The tip of my pick is on this line right here. This line has to line up with this line on the casting. And I just adjusted this. I was using way too much oil. The The edge of this was actually going past the line on the casting, but now you can see that that 
mark lines up pretty well. And the way you adjust that is really simple. It's just two jam nuts on this cable right here. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so the pickup tube fell into this gas tank. I can't really get to it because there's a bunch of gas in it. The fuel pickup is still in here. So I'm trying to soak up the gasoline with this cardboard but also hoping the pickup comes out of the hole. This tank is junk, so I'm just gonna sawzall it apart. That's what I'm gonna do. There we go. fuel line and pickup tube thing filter now we're going to take the fuel pickup filter going to slap on one of these clamps where are you going nowhere now this might be a little trickier because I need to thread this through, and I don't know if this is going to fit through there. I'm trying to think how would be the easiest way to do this. So what I wound up doing was I just used a zip tie because I could not get a hose clamp on there. It's just not enough, not enough barb to, to get a hose clamp on there. So hopefully uh, a zip tie holds it on there. And this is threaded all the way in there and has some of that yellow gasoline safe tape. Now what I'm going to do is just put a bead of black silicone on the cap here and thread this on. There we go. Nice, decent layer on there. Don't want to forget to hook up the tail light. All right, so now that the gas tank is secured at the back, I just hooked up this vent tube to this little vent right here. And now we just need to hook up the fuel line. Got another one of these crimp connections. It's not going anywhere. I'm also going to adjust the throttle cable because I don't think I was getting wide open throttle. So that should just be this jam nut right here. That looks like wide open throttle to me because this uh, throttle bracket, or this throttle arm here is now touching that bracket. All right, one last check. It's touching at idle, and now at wide open throttle, it's actually getting all the way open. So that should be adjusted correctly. Whoever put this together last time was a moron, which is me. All right, we should be able to just put the air box back in and go see how this thing runs now that uh, the oil injection has been adjusted. We have a new seat on here that actually fits. Um, All right, sled's back together. Oil injection pump has been tweaked. Throttle cables have been tweaked. I'm really hoping this thing rips. Let's see what happens. <laughs> 